On to our cover story in this edition of Fine Print. The decks are cleared for what is a crucial summit between India's Narendra Modi and China's President Xi Jinping. Although it's being touted as an informal meeting, government sources say both the sides are looking at progress on three major issues. The border, bilateral trade and investment and multilateral cooperation. After the 73-day-long Doklam standoff last August, sources say both the leaders want to put a lid on rising tensions along the line of actual control. This would include strictly observing all LAC mechanisms worked out in the past. This also applies especially to the banner drill, wherein the event of a face-off, the other side is warned by large printed banners that they have intruded and must go back. No border breakthrough, no other breakthrough, none on China-occupied Aksai Chin because any settlement with India here would annoy Pakistan. Nothing on Arunachal Pradesh, which China claims, but India is in possession of. The middle sector holds promise because both sides have exchanged maps, but neither is willing to accept the other's claims. India is hopeful of some breakthrough on bilateral trade and investment. China has made noises about addressing India's $51 billion trade deficit. Prime Minister Modi is expected to press President Xi on that as well. The sources say Prime Minister Modi may also remind Xi of his promise made in 2015 to invest $20 billion in India. Let's remind you, only $1.5 billion of that has come so far. The focus on multilateral diplomacy could also see the two sides again coming together on global trade, thereby opposing protectionism. Although India is not a major exporter, make in India could take us down that path. Also expect the two sides to build on past cooperation in areas like climate change as well. And a day after the announcement of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's trip to China this week, India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj continued with her engagements in Beijing. She met Chinese President Xi Jinping along with uh, foreign ministers of other countries at the Great Hall of the People. Ms. Swaraj also called on Chinese Vice President Wong Kishan, who is arguably the second most powerful leader in China after Xi Jinping. An informal summit is unknown in the India-China context. So why are Xi Jinping and Narendra Modi going ahead with a two-day one-on-one in the central city of Wuhan? Now, sources have told me beyond that the informal summit will not result in any agreement. Rather, a broad vision could emerge on the direction of bilateral relations over the next 15 years. This is important given the many downs in bilateral relations, to say the least, in the last few years. The question is, why now? Let's take a look at China's reasons for starters. China is under immense pressure on multiple fronts. North Korean leader, uh, North Korea under Kim Jong-un is showing no new purpose and resolve in seeking to end its international isolation, which may be unsettling for Beijing. It could also be that Kim sees opening up to the world as a way of reducing his dependence on China. Add to that, Donald Trump is threatening trade war and there is no certainty how this could end. Donald Trump has also been aggressive and unpredictable in military terms, sending his navy into the South China Sea in direct rejection of Beijing's claims. He has resumed diplomatic contacts with Taiwan and is normalizing relations with Vietnam. Then two days ago, Xi Jinping's signature Belt and Road Initiative hit a massive roadblock. Europe slams the Belt and Road Initiative. 27 of the 28 European Union envoys in Beijing condemned it. In a report, they said it ran counter to liberalizing trade. It was biased in favor of highly subsidized Chinese companies. China was shaping globalization to suit its own interests. It lacked transparency, sustainability and social standards as well. Take a listen. The Belt and Road Initiative can provide much needed infrastructure financing to partner countries. But these ventures can also lead to problematic increase in debt, potentially limited other spending as debt services arise and rise, and creating balances of payment challenges. 
Well, Europe's objections had been flagged off a year ago, but this is a slap in Xi Jinping's face. Europe now mirrors India's stand on the Belt and Road Initiative. Recall that India boycotted the first BRI summit in Xiamen last September. Crucially, no dates have been announced for the second BRI summit this year. Xi Jinping may see this meeting with Modi as an opportunity to gauge his intentions on the Belt and Road Initiative. Let's get to the other side of things. Let's take a look at Prime Minister Modi's motives for attending that summit. Protocol-wise, this is the Chinese president's turn to visit. Critics say Modi's visit is an acknowledgement that an asymmetry exists between China and India. Indian diplomats say that China is a neighbor and bad politics with a powerful neighbor is poor statesmanship. Modi going to Wuhan does not imply India is weak or a walkover, Modi is getting an opportunity to talk freely and frankly with Xi Jinping. She is China's most powerful leader after Mao Zedong, the founder of modern China. She has the power to give new shape to his country's India policy. Binjo there have been enough hiccups in the India-China relationship. Sources say the standoff on the Doklam Plateau in Bhutan last year when China sought to build a road and India stopped them has rattled both the countries. The unsettled nature of the border has also forced India to beef up its force presence in those areas. China's inroads into the region, including Sri Lanka and Nepal, have been disquieting and, uh, and India needs to probe China's intentions. And on her visit to Beijing, India's external affairs minister Sushma Swaraj asked Indians and Chinese to learn each other's language in order to help them overcome communication barriers, resulting in a bid to further strengthening the relationship between the two nations. Swaraj made the remarks during a program called Contribution of Hindi in India-China Friendship, organized by the Indian Embassy. चीन में भारतीय फिल्में बहुत लोकप्रिय हो रही हैं अभी-अभी कल मैं विदेश मंत्री वांगी जी से मिल रही थी उन्होंने तीन फिल्मों का नाम खुद लिया दंगल सीक्रेट सुपरस्टार और हिंदी मीडिया के तीनों फिल्में बहुत ज्यादा चर्चित हुई कि भारत और चीन की मैत्री में हिंदी का योगदान मैत्री किसको कहते हैं दोस्ती को और जब दो दोस्त आपस में बैठते हैं तो क्या चाहते हैं कि मन की बात करें उनके जो दिल में आया है वो एक दूसरे के साथ साझा करें उसके लिए भाषा की जरूरत होती है मैं हिंदी बोलूं तो आप समझें आप चीनी बोलें तो मैं समझूं तो हम इकट्ठे बैठ करके मैत्री भाव में बात कर सकते हैं and when it comes to the relationship between India and China, it's no longer just about bilateral trade and the need to resolve the disputes. Indian films are India's biggest soft power internationally, including in China. They've not only made big bucks in the country, but Hindi films have also gained diplomatic currency.